Welcome to Watch Your Story. Thank you for joining us today. We have an interesting, award-winning photographer for you to meet. His name is Eric Courtney, and Eric's originally from Chicago, but now he's a pretty well-known photographer here in Las Vegas. So Eric, what made you get from Chicago to here and become a photographer? You weren't doing photography before. Well, you know, I was. Um, first of all, thank you for having me on the show today, Judy. Um, the Pretty much, you know, I. I Professionally doing photography is different than just doing photography, but pretty much all my life I've had a, a camera in my hand since I was a kid. Um, I was thinking about that the other day and going back to when my mom had one of the little brownie cameras. Yes, yes. Remember those with the little I flip I had one of those, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And those are, you know, you see those now, and, and those are a very collectible item because of the quality they produced and, and uh, what people use them for and whatnot. But that's one of the first cameras that I had. And then through the years, I progressed up to, remember the 110 little cartridges oh, you put yes. in? Oh, uh yes. -huh. And you had the little flash on top and that. And then uh, then I progressed up to uh, my very first DSLR when I was uh, in college in Chicago. Big deal. And I went around and photographed architecture. And But it was all for for me to do, and I really didn't share like it with anybody hobby, else. More. It was a hobby. Yeah. yeah. You know, in addition, while I was going to college and whatnot. And then... Um, then I spent many years in the industrial industry, and then it wasn't until uh, we had the opportunity to move to the Las Vegas Valley that I decided, you know what, it's time for me to pursue my passion of photography and share it with other people. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, it, it, it's it's very interesting sharing your art and photography with other people to see what kind of reactions you get. But yeah, yes. my whole purpose is to uh, share photography that makes people smile and engage and, and whatnot. So. Yeah, your photography does do that. You, you're very creative. I love, I love your work. Yeah. And you know, I, what is your favorite thing to photograph? What is the favorite photographs that you've done? I mean, I know we have some here today. We're going to show people. Yeah, you know, um, it. You know, I have a, a a few, but you know, photographers. A lot of photographers that like landscape photography, or they do wedding photography, or they do um, portraits and whatnot. I really find um, going to a zoo and photographing animals just to be just one of the funnest things to do because you never know what they're going to do. No, you, you don't. never know um, if they're going to stare at the camera and you capture that one image and you've got to be ready for, you know, or they may stick out their tongue or they may wave their hand or something, you know, and you just sit there and just snap, snap, snap. And that's probably the funnest for me because, you know, with photography, there's Photography that pays the bills, and then there's photography yes. that you have fun with, and yeah. that's the part that I really like to do. Yeah. So, and uh, and also uh, doing child portraits. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of people are really into that now, and um, and they're just fun because again, you don't know what little babies kids are going to do. They're just cute, you yeah. know. Every baby is cute, no matter what you do. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, show us some of your work. Uh, one of the things we were talking about. So this is this is one of my my recent favorites. Ooh, I love that. And it is. Um, it is a, a giraffe, and this was taken at the Living Desert out by Palm Springs mm -hmm. uh, early this year. And what was fun about it is uh, they had the giraffe exhibit open. We were still in you know the pandemic thing, and it was just sitting there. And people were feeding. You could buy like lettuce and stuff and feed the giraffe, but they had these. Um, uh, watering because they really can't bend down to get water real easy so they had these like rain spouts that come out and the giraffe was just sitting there and just licking 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 the little drops that came off and i was able to capture this one photo and it's just one of my yeah i love it how his tongue's hanging out yeah it's just you know right there and i just snap 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 and sat there for about an hour or so and just got a lot of pictures and decided you know what this is one of my favorite ones and i'm just gonna put it into a canvas print and I love it. People, so. Of course, you know I love African animals anyway. So oh yeah, yeah. So this is this is one of my favorites that you've done. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. That was fun. Yeah. And I see you've got your crystal ball. Tell us about that. Well, the crystal ball, um, I call it my magic glass, and it ties into a piece that I won a Best of Show uh, award for at City Lights Art Gallery in 2021, all photography show. And um, it's funny, with there's all sorts of different types of photography, and there's photographers that plan out these extravagant, you know, um, projects and executions mm -hmm. and whatnot. And then there's the ones where you just spontaneously, you have something like this and you put it someplace and um, and then you put it someplace and you enter it into a show, not ever expecting 
that it's going to win something. And then, all, you know, you win best of show and it's just the craziest <laughs> thing. So I just happen to have that one here today. Great. We want to see that. And uh, I had this made into a canvas but for the show. It was just an 8 by 10 print. And this was taken down in Nelson's Landing. And this is an old Model T car. And they have all these old antique cars out there. Oh, really? And uh, I was just got this from Santa Claus for Christmas and we were down there and I said you know what? I need a place to put this because normally you have like a little holder like this and you right. put it on our little tripod and I just put it in the radiator cap <gasps> of the really of the Model T Ford and and I shot several shots and I said God you know that looks kind of cool and um, and this is pretty much an as is print a little color enhancement but not too much but what's nice about what I call the magic glass is you can see the what it does to the to its surroundings. Yes. It basically, it creates a, a reverse image of inside the magic glass. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's my that's my piece behind the magic glass. I've used that in, in a few other pieces, which I can show a little bit later too. So that's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. Thank that's you. That's beautiful. So, what is your very very favorite thing to photograph? Very very favorite thing. Um, I like I like creating what I call art, and then I get to photograph it. And then I disassemble it so nobody else can ever do it. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite things to do because you could go, um, you could go to Red Rock or you could go to Chicago, New York, and uh, pictures of the Brooklyn Bridge, pictures of the Big Bean in Chicago, San Francisco, the you know, and there's a zillion out there. But what I like to do is create something where um, it's my idea. I get to collect everything, plan it, execute it. And then it can never be duplicated again. And that's kind of one of the things that I've done. And you've yeah, seen some of I've my pieces I've seen some of your pieces that you've done that with, yeah. with buttons and crayons and various Button things. Button crayons, things around the house. Um, during the beginning of the pandemic, that was one of my favorite things was just going around the house and finding ordinary things, putting them into groups, and then taking them and photographing them and then taking them apart. Yeah. You know? So they're truly one of a kind to me. That's my piece of art. So do you want to hear about a more recent one that I did? Yes, I do. Cool. So. Um, during the pandemic and stuff, and you, uh, oh, here we go. Um, I wanted to get out and, you know, because for six months or so or a year, you really couldn't do a whole lot. And there wasn't no. a lot of places to go because places were closed because they didn't have staffing and you couldn't go to the National Park, you know, all this crazy stuff. So when things started to open up, uh, I went out with a friend of mine, Gina Galdak Hall, mm -hmm. and uh, we just decided, hey, let's go take a day and let's go up to Beatty and let's just go see what comes along along the way. And I said, well, I've got this idea to execute uh, for a photography show at City Lights Art Gallery that was this year. It was called The Scavenger Hunt. Mm. And that was the category where you had to get certain items and uh, and then put them into a setting, photograph it, and that became your, your scavenger hunt. Wow. So it was, it was really a lot of fun. So, um, so what we did is we drove, there's the sand dunes on the way to Beatty that's off to the left-hand side. And uh, she was gracious enough to take a picture. And this is this is me out in the, I don't know if you can see that. Um, we'll, out, we'll blow it up so that everybody okay, will be able yeah. to see it. So it's out in the desert and that's me with the camera. And then I have all my little items inside the scavenger ah, hunt. I like it. And that's just kind of the setting. I said, well, get a picture of me because we'll never be able to do this again. Yes, yes. You know, so, um, so then this is a, this is a uh, kind of what the image looked like after I took it and I did some some alterations to it. Uh -huh. And so there's various different things that are in here, including part of the scavenger hunt was a cell phone, uh, a magnet, which happens to be a merman. How I found that, I don't know. And then a toothbrush and then some um, cigar holders with sand in them that kind of. So what I was trying to create was kind of a shrine. Right. You know, and with a pencil and then the clock has 1111 on it. And if you're into numerology, 1111 mm. is a huge thing. And, and then there's keys. And then then this little character, which is kind of the guardian of the shrine. And then you've got a light. And then there's the magic ball again. Yes. So my magic See, glass is, is right again. in there. Yeah. So oh. it's kind of come, you know, a little bit of a signature piece for me. So Yeah, it's fun. It's yeah. a fun piece. So that was that one. And then that uh, would make a, a great puzzle. You know, I, I, I work the puzzles on the Internet and that would be um, a good puzzle. Oh, that would be a good puzzle, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'll have to, th yeah, I'll have to yeah, think Yeah, you'll have to contact cool. them and tell them. A nice thousand piece puzzle that would take yes. like months to put together. Yeah. <laughs> Worked on a few of those. So um, so this is for the uh, for the show. Then I added my artistic interpretation Ooh, I like of it. I the background with that. Yeah, because I didn't want it to just look like a bunch of stuff inside sand. Mm -hmm. So I went in and I added my artistic touch to it and kind of gave it a little bit of a busy background. But 
Um, but the main focus is on the items that are inside the scavenger hut. So yeah, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. And then this is another. Uh, this is another with a little bit of a different background in it too. I like that too. Yeah. yeah. So it was fun. But now, it was a, now, what makes you um, think of these different backgrounds when you look at it? And you say, "Oh, I think I'm going to I'm going to put something different in the background." Uh, what makes your brain work like that? Sometimes, you know, I have to take just the original image and just think about it. What I want it to look like and what I'm doing, and you know, maybe if I'm entering into a show, you know, what are what what I'm who who or what I might be competing against. You think about all those different factors, and then you. You start playing around with some, obviously, with some of the software, and, and you see, you know what, I like this, or I like that, mm. or I want to go for this color, or I want to go for this type of background, or I want to have movement, or I want to put in a sky, or I want to, so. Yeah. It all depends on, you know, what I'm feeling at the moment, too, so. Yeah, because both of those, the, with the backgrounds being different, they're both exceptional. Yeah, because this one, I originally liked, and then I was mm -hmm. like, hmm, you know, I don't know, and then a few days later, I came back in this one. I ended up entering this one into the show. Did it win? This one did not win, unfortunately. But I would have thought it would win. I would have thought so too, but you know, you never know with judges. So, I know. but I do have one that did. So this was my other, um, this was my other one that I did. And this one I was not going to enter in the show because I just wasn't thrilled with it. Wow, there's a million keys back there. Well, yes, yeah, and that was my background. So what I did is I, I set up a, a, a kind of a mini studio, if you will, with mirrors, all mirrors. And then I had a bag of blank keys and that was gonna be my background because I was having problems with the reflection and whatnot with all the mirrors and that. So I said, well, you know what, let me just do a key background. And then I added in all the other items, which you saw in the mm -hmm. previous print. And this one actually won, uh, won a ribbon wow. in the show. That's and wonderful. it was not that they, I guess they, they liked everything that was in there, but it had to do with the composition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get into judging is you get judges that are very technical oriented and it's like, this has to be this way and this has to be this way. And then you get judges that are just like, you know what, I like, I like pet portraits or I like yeah. odd things, you know. So you never know. And that's no. what makes entering into shows um, helps you maintain a competitive edge. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because you never know what a judge is going to like. And if you get a different judge on the same show, you would have gotten a different winner. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. do some I do some judging on some shows and and it's interesting when I am on a committee with other judges that it we almost always have the same likes and dislikes, mm -hmm. which surprises me. Yeah. 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 So that was one of the, the fun things to do. Um, you know, again, it's just um, putting your creative mind to use and saying, you know what, I want to do something different and get out there and kind of stretch yourself a little bit too. Because mm -hmm. normally that's something I would not have done on my own, you know, just because of you need to do something like somebody else just for safety, but then also to help you with the props and, and whatnot too. So, yeah. That's amazing. They're yeah. beautiful. Thank so you. what is it about uh, belonging to a, a community gallery like uh City Lights is a co-op gallery. It's not owned by a person. It's owned by the artists themselves. What is it about that that makes you like being a part of it so much? Um, what makes me feel like is I want to be there. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be there. And that's a big difference. And uh, I enjoy the people that are there. Um, everybody has a fascinating story. And everybody else wants to be there, too. And it's a nonprofit um, 5013C all volunteer organization with a great mission to raise funds for scholarships for high school seniors that are going to pursue a degree in, in art education in college. So, and uh, it's a really great group of people. And and it's it's the first place where I really went in and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to show my photography here. And the the first show, I actually got an honorable mention for one of the prints that I did. I don't have it with me today, but mm -hmm. yeah, and it really it it validated, it's like, wow, somebody likes my photography and it, it, it felt really good. You know, yeah. it's kind of like when you run your own business and you, and you do your first sale, <laughs> you always save that first dollar bill, you know, yeah. and that's, that's to me, it's an honorable mention, but to me, that was best to show. Oh, I know. Winning because that ribbon, you're so you know, proud. That just you... to hear your name called. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, Eric Carney, honorable mention, you know, and, and it was really cool. So, you know, the fact that uh, other people liked it and, and I, that piece did sell too at the and show. And maybe not just people you know, but but people you don't know, they liked your photography. That's the that's the biggest compliment because you know friends and family are always gonna you know buy your things or give you. But when when it's people you don't know, totally don't know at all, and they they validate what you're doing, it it really is a good feeling. Yeah. Now, yeah. did you study photography? I have studied photography over the years. 
when we moved out here to, to the Vegas Valley, I decided to pursue another degree in social media marketing, but I focused all my electives on every photography class I could take. I did that when I did uh, my first degree back in Chicago. All my electives were on photography. Mostly back then, it was mostly um, uh, 35 millimeter mm -hmm. photography. Mm -hmm. My more recent education uh, pursuits has been more digital. Yes. And creating yeah. digital art and digital photography, which yes. is, yeah. Now, do you, do, you, do you use software programs as well to um, enhance your photographs, mind you? I, I, I do to a certain point. Uh, one of the things that I learned that was a huge value, and one of my instructors told me is, um, he goes, at the beginning of the class, he goes, do you want to be a good editor or do you want to be a good photographer? Uh. That changed everything because I was so good at taking okay pictures and then spending hours editing and, and it really forced me into another direction that I want to be a really good photographer and I want to, don't want to have to do a lot of editing unless I want to create something really artistic you know like uh, like this one or this one has you know it's artistic touch yeah. to it but there's really not a whole lot I did to this so it all depends but there are some some other things that I've done where uh, I have gone in and, and had some fun and replaced and you know and, and this and that but yeah yeah. So. Yeah. What photographer? I see you got a Nikon. Yes, I use Nikon products. Um, you know, there's there's the three big brands out there: Nikon, Sony, um, Nikon, Sony, and Canon. Mm -hmm. And then of course you have the high end brands, which you know, like Leica and all that. Yeah. But uh, I've been with Nikon since uh, the first digital camera that I bought, which I was love a, which was a little one megapixel flip thing. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. So you know, they they all get to the same place. They just kind of go a different route. Right. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. But I think it also has to do with who's got them in their hands, too. True. Yeah, because yeah. the photographer sees what the picture is, mm -hmm. and you create it from what you see or what you think you could, could see, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and try to capture what... That's the whole thing is, like, I'll have a vision in my mind, like, with the, with the desert thing that we did. Um, I'll have the vision and then it's a matter of setting it up and executing it and getting the camera to capture that vision the way I see it in my head. And that's the, wow. that can be the wow. tricky part sometimes. Now, how do photography and history go together? You know, I was thinking about this and more recently, um, well, you know, over the years, people think, you know, oh, I have a cell phone, I'm a I can take pictures and all that stuff, you know. And then I was thinking, well, how, how important is photography and history? And, um, Time Life Magazine and National Geographic and, and whatnot, whenever there's major events, or even not major events, um, there's always this the one picture that defines um, an era or a happening or an event. And one of the ones recently that I saw was, um, was, it, was a girl just standing with a, I'm gonna cry, with a crust of bread and she had a tear running down oh. her eye. And the background was, you know, and there was nobody else with her. And only to read the story is that um, her parents had been killed because of war and she didn't know where her next meal was coming from and you know how history I mean that that picture defines yes. a moment in history um, you think of other pictures like more recently with the Queen shaking mm -hmm. the Prime Minister's hand and that's the last photograph that was ever taken of the Queen right. and um, and then you see three days later you see uh, the new Prime Minister meeting King Charles the third you know, talk about a first week day on a uh, first week on a job. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. But just those those you know those are moments in history that are just captured in in a single image, and that's why I think you know photography is just so important in history because they do capture those those images, and it, it doesn't have to be you know somebody that works for Nat Geo or, or Time Life or anything like that. Yeah, it can be anybody. Anybody you know, can take a picture that is yeah. something that everybody wants to remember yeah or that touches someone's life exactly people touches make, your heart you make a, you make a human connection yeah. and that's that's really important there's um there's a couple groups on facebook where people post things and i see people homelessness you know downtown new york mm -hmm. chicago san francisco wherever it may be and they capture those images and it's like how did those people get there what is their yeah. story yeah. You know, um, everybody has a story. I know, I'm fascinated yeah, with stories. Yeah, you know, and whether it's whether it's somebody that's homeless on the street or it's, you know, um, some big high-powered whatever, or, or just you and me. I mean, you know, we all have great stories to tell. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you done lately to enhance your artistic ability? Um, one of the things that I've done more recently is, and one of the things I learned during the COVID 
And in just life in general, as you get a little bit older, you get a little more selective on who you're friends with and who you're around and stuff. And I decided, you know what, I need to surround myself with just positive people and people that will inspire me. And um, there was something that came up at the gallery. I've always been photography and I've always joked that I, I, I can't do, you know, stick people to save my life. And people are, you know, you need to take up painting and stuff. And I thought about the story you told me one time about your doctor said you need to take up painting and I see your work. And it's like, holy mackerel, you know. And um, so that inspired me to, there, there was a brochure that was sitting down the desk one day and it says, how to paint for the absolute beginner. Absolute beginner. I said, sign me up. So I signed up and it was, uh, Terry Thompson did it at the gallery. And it was, um, it, it was just, don't make fun of my painting, but I decided to bring this down. But it was, it was one of the funnest days I've had in the longest time. And I realized that, you know what, I, I can paint. You can and, paint. And this is just, this is my little, oh, my, little I love it. my little entry into, you know, little, uh, the little lighthouse. And it was I fun. I love it. And we just, we had such fun doing it. And at the end of the day, I said, you know what, this isn't a Monet or anything like that. But it was kind of like the honorable mention that I won for my first photography that I entered. I said, you know what, I walked away so proud of this. Well, you should. And I've got it hanging in my office. And one of the things <clears throat> that I've also done is, uh, somebody told me, you need to surround yourself with, with success, with your successes. And so my ribbons and plaques and all that stuff, because it's a reminder of how how good you've been and what you've done and what you've yes, accomplished in life. Yes. And so I've got this hanging right in my wall. So when I go on my Zooms and whatnot, it's it's right up there behind <laughs> me. So, and, you know, it's fun. I mean, it's... It, I'm so proud of you for doing that. Yeah. I remember when we talked about it and you said, I, I don't think I can paint. But look at you. Yeah, I did, you know, and it, 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 there were people in here, mm -hmm. but I, I wasn't real happy with the people because, so I kind of painted over them. I said, I'll paint them in later when I know how to do people because I had their shadows way off and it looked like they'd lost their arm or something, <laughs> you know? And um, so I painted over and So everybody else had people in there. They said, well, yours is post-COVID. Mine's, mine's during COVID. <laughs> with no I people like around. it. That's Yeah. Fun. But we just okay. had a really good time, so. And, and wasn't that time that you spent doing that wasn't it good for your soul? It was very good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was smiling all day long. It was just, it was fun. It was I think it's really it's one of the best things I've ever done for myself was to go and learn to paint. Yeah. And I was, I mean, I was, what, in my 50s when yeah. I learned to paint, at least that's, in my 50s. That's where I'm at. Yeah. You know? And people say, well, you know, we're too old to learn new things. We are. You know, you never get too old to learn new things, and yeah. especially something that's fun. Yeah, and that is fun. It's it's wonderful. I'm so it, proud of you. It was you know, and and one of the reasons I share this story is, like you said, people are like, oh, you know, I'm too old to do whatever, whatever, and I'm like, you know what? No, you're never too old to um, to learn new things and, and do new things. Um, and that's one of the things I really love about photography is um, every time I, you know, every photographer has their own style, the way of doing things and stuff. But you're always constantly learning. There is no, um, there is no, I know it all in photography. Absolutely not. You know, I've got this camera here and I've had it for a couple of years. There's still stuff on there that, you know. I know. We, you know. we have to be lifelong learners when we're into creativity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sorry we're running out of time. I'm having such a good oh time with you. I didn't realize our time's just gone by. You're so yeah. fun. No, um, thank you. But tell our, our audience is, how they can get in touch with you or find out more about you. You have a okay. website. Yeah, um, I do have a website. So uh, it's Eric you, David let's Courtney. Let's use this one. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hi. Um, Eric David Courtney. And uh, my email is edc856 at gmail.com. You can also find me on fineartamerica.com. Search for Eric D. Courtney. And you can also find me on pixels.com and look for Eric D. Courtney. Great. Thank you. You know, because of you, I signed up with Fine Art America and now I've got puzzles and, and pillows and all kinds of things with my art and oh, because of you. It's wonderful. It, well, thank you. It's, it's, I'm glad I inspired you to do that. So, uh, you know, that's what, 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 you know, as you get a little bit older, you look for people to inspire you and do new things and you know, get rid of the negativity and just move forward and do positive things. Yeah. That's great. And, and the Fine Art America and Pixels.com, they have all sorts of crazy fun stuff, you know, and from... Uh, mouse pads to phone cases to just you know just get a gift yeah so <laughs> you know someone can actually get a piece of your art or a piece of your photography mm -hmm. without it being very expensive no not at all they have a nice a yeah. nice gift that's wonderful yeah. yeah yeah well thank you so much for being here well thank it's you for having me i appreciate fun it. time as always with you <laughs> and thank you for joining us and we hope you'll join us again real soon for another exciting story on what's your story